Once more into the breach, my modeling friends. Well, welcome back, everybody. Boyd here with you. Well, you can see I'm off to a start on my next building project here on the channel. This is the uh, Merit Models 1350 scale USS Enterprise CV-6 from World War II. This is a famous aircraft carrier uh, and another of the long line of, uh, you know, interesting Enterprise uh, names that went down in history. Um, this ship took part in just about every major battle except maybe Santa Cruz in the uh, Pacific Theater during World War II and uh, was very instrumental in a lot of the uh, U.S. victories at that time uh, in Midway and a few other key battles. But this is a, you know, iconic ship, the, the most highly decorated ship in, in U.S. Navy history. And a lot of people uh, will probably know that uh, there was a huge campaign at the end of the war to save the ship from the scrapyard, uh, you know, because we've got some World War II aircraft carriers at various ports around the country that are on display to this day as a uh, Museums. We have the USS Lexington that's right here in Corpus Christi, Texas, which I visited several times. And um, but it was, you know, it ultimately failed, and the Enterprise was scrapped. There are a few big pieces of her around different museums. I think her main mast is somewhere, her bell, and some other things, you know, are at uh, various places. So she's not completely gone. But uh, it was a real shame that uh, you know the the most highly decorated ship ever was uh, you know sent to the scrapyard. But you know, when I started reading about a lot of the reasoning behind it all, it kind of made more sense. Um, she was, uh, she was, she had a lot of miles on her. And uh, again, since she was so active during the war, she was probably just about worn out. And what the Navy was probably thinking is that when you save some of these ships, they probably in the first, you know, few years after the war anyways, probably were, you know, thinking that, well, maybe they might have to use them again. And, uh, you know, if something came up and they wanted to keep ships that were, you know, relatively, you know, young as far as their service life where they were still, you know, they still had some time left. And I'm, I'm afraid the Enterprise probably would have been um, uh, pretty worn out. She she suffered, you know, several major incidents during the war with major damage to her structure and things like that, that they were able to repair. But I'm sure they had to rush those repairs and they didn't, you know, do them the exact way they really wanted to. So there are many reasons behind it. It's still sad, but... At least we can build a model of it and pay our own, you know, tribute in our own kind of way. But um, this has been a really fun little kit to work on. I've uh, had no problems at all with the uh, quality of the plastic itself. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the photo etch, though, here. We've got uh, six sheets of photo etch that the model comes with. And uh, I start off by um, getting the hull built up here first. My plan is, is I'm going to get the entire lower hull done. You can see I've got the propeller shafts and mounts on there. I'll be putting the rudder on and getting the lower hangar deck area all pretty much done and all the little small detail parts. That's going to be some photo etch, some plastic parts. And then I'll go ahead and paint it all before we put the uh, upper deck work on and the superstructure. That's kind of, you know, going to be my plan. I've got the little, you know, base all set up here. I painted on the name and everything. And um, so we're, you know, kind of building from the ground up. No lighting or anything on this one. Nothing fancy. Just going to do a nice uh, detail and paint job on it. I'm still going back and forth on whether I want to um, make this look used and at sea, you know, kind of as it's depicted on the box art here, or if I'm going to make an Admiral's model and just make it really nice. I'm leaning more towards the Admiral's model, but we'll see what we come up with. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about where I'm going and um, what we're going to be doing on this. This is just going to be the first update here. Now you can see what I started off here was uh, getting the, some of the photo etch ready for the, uh, for the hull detail. And this is where I ran into a little bit of an issue, which I hope is not a forbearer of the uh, uh, the photo etch going down the road, but I don't think it will be. The problem that I had, you guys, is when I looked at the um, the one issue we have here, I guess I'll start off with, is that, uh, it, and it often bothers me on photo etch stuff, is that they often aren't very good at uh, showing you exactly where the photo etch parts go. They're kind of vague, and I'll, I'll kind of show you that here. Let me get to the correct page where we're... What we're working with here is called... Uh, the detail we're putting on, guys, is called a degaussing cable. And what that is, um, they would run these cables around the uh, entire hull on these warships and uh, would have an elect electric charge, and it was basically reverse polarity so that if the ship encountered any uh, magnetic mines in the water, they wouldn't, in theory, stick to the ship. They wouldn't, you know, the, the they would have an electric field around the hull that would kind of repel these things. 
and uh, you see them a lot on warships. You can see it actually depicted here right on the box art, going all the way down around, down like this, and around both sides of the hull. Well, let me see if I can find the page here where they actually show this going on. Uh, it might be one back further here. Oh, or it's further ahead. Let me, uh, yeah, I guess it's further ahead here. The point I'm trying to make, you guys, is that, um, yeah, here it is right here. You can see these little strips right here, and they're, you know, you can kind of make out where they go, but you're, you know, as far as the exact position that they go on the uh, hull, as far as, you know, does, is it, it's hard to tell here. Is it supposed to wrap all the way around the fan tail? Is it supposed to, you know, go all the way up to the bow or whatever? Now, on this, this guide here, I was able to get a little bit better look at it and see that, it kind of ends a little bit before the fan tail, and you can you know you can kind of see where it goes up here on the uh, uh, towards the bow. So I kind of you know made up from that and started saying, okay, let's work this out. Well, then I started cutting out the actual pieces, and the problem that we ran into, guys, is that they uh, they goofed this up when they made this, and I'm not sure if it's going to be the same on all these kits or not, but uh, hopefully it won't be. Here we have the two um, pieces that go on the bow, and you know you should have your this, in theory, here should be the uh, the starboard side because you've got that same upward sweep, if you notice, like right here. Uh, this is the uh, starboard side. Well, if we lay this other one next to it here, you can see that it's a mirror of this exact same one. The problem is it's on the wrong side. So if we flip this over to where it goes on the other side to give the same you know up sweep like that, the detail of the photo etch is on the wrong side of the part, and there's nothing there. It's just flat. Okay, so that was kind of issue number one. Well, then the other issue I had was uh, this thicker piece here that goes towards the fan tail. If you try to, um, it's supposed to follow this, you know, line on the edge of the uh, hull plating here. Well, if you try to fold that and, and make that make that contour right there, it's it's not going to work, you guys. It's going to, you know, it's going to keep going straight. It's not going to make that nice kind of sweep. This should have been made with a little curve to it um, that matches the contour because now if you try to bend that around there like that, it's it's going to be crooked. And um, you can't, you know, you can't bend this stuff laterally. You can't bend it this way. You can bend it all you want like this, but you can't bend it like this or it'll get a big kink in it. So I thought, well, that's not going to work at all. And I'm not quite sure why they engineered it like that. And like I said, I hope that's not a sign of the photo etch going down the road because I'm not a real huge fan of um, working with photo etch to begin with. But the, um, the the way that I, you know, I had to kind of brainstorm a little bit and I had to figure out how I was going to solve that issue. So what I wound up coming up with is I came up with using some fiber optics, you guys. And it might turn out to be a blessing in the long run because I'll show you what I did here. And I think it actually is going to look better than this photo etch did. Um, but the right size that I came up with is a .50 which to me looked just about like the right scale. So what I did is I um, I made the uh, degaussing cable there. You can see with uh, with fiber optics that have been stretched uh, along the side here. And, and the reason I think this looks good is because looking at actual photographs of the ship, these cables were not perfect. They were they had a few little you know imperfections they weren't like they didn't look like perfect boards on there they looked a little bit you know you can see like i did here they they've got little spots in them here and there where they're um uh they're not perfect and they look like real cables that are on the outside of the ship and also you get that that real 3d look you know with a with a sort of a round cable and then what it did is it went from four cables here they have you uh it drops down to two just as on the photo etch and then it runs by two all the way up to the bow up here like that and um, so when I painted this with the primer, I thought, yeah, that, that looks really good. So I'm, I'm going to stick with that, you guys. I think it's going to work out. And again, once we add a little bit of um, uh, a wash on this thing and everything, that detail will pop out a little bit better, too. So I think in the long run, that's going to look actually a little bit better. But um, like I said, the plastic part of the kit so far has been going together flawless. No problems there. So I'm not worried about anything going forward on that. But hopefully we don't have no, you know, more problems with the photo etch. A lot of it that's left is just um, railings and stuff like that. You got an anchor or like a, a deck crane here. Uh, let me see if I can check out all the other stuff. Yeah, mostly small stuff. And you got a radar assembly here and some other things. But I think we'll be okay on the rest of it. So um, 
we'll be okay going forward. I just want to explain a little bit about what you uh, might deal with if you get this kit yourself again. I'm not sure if that'll be the same mistake on all the kits or, you know, just I happen to get one here. Now, going over here, we've got um, some really cool stuff that Henry sent me with this kit. We've got some nice trumpeter uh, aircraft that are a little bit better detailed than the, the kit-supplied airplanes. We've got a Dauntless here, we've got a Wildcat, and we've got a Devastator. So all the planes that we want for the Battle of Midway, which I, that's the version of the ship I uh, intend to build, are here. So we're going to be all, you know, we're going to be all right with that. Now Henry also sent this nice little Starfighter decals marking set for the airplanes, which also gives you some markings for the ship itself, which is a good thing because looking through the kit, I discovered that the, uh, the decal set for the kit is actually missing. Uh, but not to worry because uh, Henry also sent this really nice um, warship pictorial book and uh, thumbing through it and getting to the section on the Enterprise. Um, the way she appeared at the Battle of Midway, they actually removed all of her markings. And uh, that might surprise a few people, but it didn't even have the, uh, the small number sixes that normally would have been on the hull or the name Enterprise on the stern. That was painted over. Um, they removed all the markings in an effort to confuse the enemy so that they wouldn't know which ship was which. And uh, the big sixes that were up on the flight deck were gone. Um, the sixes on the hull were gone. The name Enterprise on the fantail. I think there was an E that was at one time painted on the uh, smokestack that was gone. And um, so, yeah, all the markings that we get uh, with the kit are intended for a different version of the ship or a version at either earlier or later than uh, the Battle of Midway version, so we're going to be fine. Now, in this little decal set here, we do get the um, the little stripes that go on the flight deck, you know, the little kind of dash marks, which is great because uh, I would have had to paint those on without that. So you do get it that included, and that was basically all that was on the Enterprise as far as markings. So we're all set with that, and um, this book turned out to be really useful, and if I ever do another one, I've, I've always sort of wanted to build a, uh, a Hornet, too, to do the, you know, uh, famous Doolittle raid, and this is the uh, uh, color scheme that was on the Hornet. She had a really unique sort of sea camo scheme. The Enterprise got a really cool looking camo scheme later on. Let me show you if I can um, find a picture of that towards the end of her career. She got her own sort of uh, dazzle scheme. There you can see it. Pretty cool. So, but we're not going to worry about that. We're doing the Battle of Midway. Now, this book also proved useful because some of the equipment that was actually on the ship was added at certain times. You've got these uh, certain gun directors uh, and, and radar arrays that were that, that constantly changed on the ship as they upgraded those. So I've got to go back and research this book really closely and make sure I nail down the configuration she would have had, uh, whether to have it on there or not, you know, during the Battle of Midway. So I'll get all that worked out. But, uh, yeah, everything's coming along really good, you guys. Plan is, is I'll be um, doing all my paintwork on the lower hull here. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I do the uh, the anti-following anti -following, uh, paint on the bottom and uh, our boot top, which is the black stripe that goes across and then up onto the hull. My plan is to get the entire um, lower hull done here with the hangar deck and all the detail that goes on that. And then before we move on up to the flight deck, I'll go ahead and paint all this. And that way we can just keep stacking everything up and have it all done and not have to go back and repaint everything um, after that. Again, no lighting or anything on this, just, you know, a straight up uh, out of the box build basically with some detail. And we'll see if we're going to do any weathering or not, or we're, we're going to do like an Admiral's display or whatever. I'm leaning more towards the Admiral's display, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So there you have it, guys. First update on the Enterprise, 1350 scale. And uh, having a lot of fun with this one. We'll be back in a few days with another update. Take care out there, guys, and happy modeling, everyone.